Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I'm your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all. Today, we're busting out Black Sonata, designed by John Keane and published by Side Room Games. This was originally a print and play, I believe, and John... Well, I guess there, there, what, there's one, two, three, four, five, there are six different publishers now. I guess this is going to, uh, probably for localization, but Side Room Games is the copy, uh, is the copy that we have. Thanks to, uh, thanks to Shrey for loaning me the copy so we can bust this out today. It's a deduction game, and, uh. I struggle with these. I love them. I love, love, love deduction games, but I struggle with them. So I'm glad that y'all are joining me. So if y'all do end up liking the stream, I'd appreciate thumb, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and support the show if you think it's worth it over on patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Certainly would appreciate it. Um, and one quick uh, show note, if y'all are interested in seeing us bust out a four-player uh, game to start possible campaign of Oath. Be sure to tune in Sunday at noon. Uh, we're going to bust out our first play of Oath on stream. It's It'll be like our third or fourth play of it. Uh, and then possibly a campaign from there if you all want to see how that plays out. But anyway, enough about that. Today is about Black Sonata. Yeah. All right, so it's solo only. So we're gonna kind of tag team this. So let's get into it, shall we? So uh, handy dandy little rule book. Now I played through this uh, most of the way uh, once earlier today, and then uh, and then thought, hey, let's go ahead and bust this out. So here we go. All right. The story, the identity of the Dark Lady from Shakespeare's sonnets, has eluded scholars and historians for more than four centuries. In Black Sonata, you will pursue the elusive lady through the streets and alleyways of, Eli El of Elizabethan London, catching glimpses and whispers which may yield clues to her identity. However, not all of the evidence is clear. You will need to sharpen your wits if you are finally able to unmask the dark lady before she slips quietly from the pages of history and is lost. All right, so uh, here, the aim of the game. You will track the Dark Lady as she flits through Shakespeare's London circa 1600. If you manage to find her, you may gain a clue as to her identity before she slips away once more. You must acquire enough clues to deduce her key, key characteristics and confront her before she escapes for good. If you can successfully catch and unmask her, then you will win fame, Respect, and oh yeah, the game as well. All right, so what is it y'all are, uh, what is it y'all are looking at here? So obviously we have the little game board over here. We have deduction markers. We have tracker markers as well. We have the clue uh, mask card is a good way to put it. So this is going to hide uh, the clue or the clues, I should say. This deck here has six different suits, and you can see the different suits based on the, uh, the foliage that is over here on the left-hand side. There are two of each of the six. We'll shuffle those up, and one of those is going to be the Dark Lady for our game, all right? Then we have the fog cards there. Then we have also uh, location keys. Now, one thing about these location keys, you see that they have holes in them, and they have holes in them in various places, as you can see. So more on those as we get going, all right? Uh, then we have the countdown card. It's gonna be at two to start for we're playing the normal difficulty. There is easy, normal, advanced, and expert. Figure we'll do normal to start. Then we have the, uh, the deck 
of stealth cards. This is kind of going to be the, not kind of, this is going to be the Dark Ladies movement. Now these are set up in a prescribed order. And I think it's important to go through the setup together uh, so that when y'all see, when y'all choose the, why am I sitting way off camera? There we go. When y'all set this up for yourselves, it makes a little bit more sense. So there are eight different, uh, or, or eight different sequences, would be a good way to put it. The four on the top, and the four on the bottom. The four on the top tend to be the easier ones because those she will, the dark lady will always move one location. Ignore the letters for now. The bottom ones are going to be she may stay in the same location uh, on a given turn. So we're going to choose. All you're doing is choosing one of these eight locations here sequences. I went ahead and chose the top left one. What that means is all of the cards in the top left you'll see are alphabetical A through Z. So as you know, there are, you know, one for every alphabet. Now, there are others that have been removed because they don't have anything in the top left hand corner. So those are actually removed from the game. Obviously, these would not be removed if they were if you were playing any of the other sequences, right? So that differs on that. All right. So I have already set up the deck here. Okay. The next thing is what we're going to do is that we know that these go A to Z, but what we do not know is where she's going to start. Okay. Uh, we'll get to that actually here in a minute. So before we do anything else, we can do this one of two ways. We can either choose one of the six suits, five and I think, no, what's the sixth one? That one. There you go. So y'all choose one of the six suits first off. Okay. And on the face side of these is going to be the various ladies in this game. And this is going to be one of these we are going to choose as our lady. These are going to be uh, the characteristics that we're going to have to match. And this is going to be some of the clues based on the suits here. But all you need to do to start off with is choose one of the six suits. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So choose that, okay? Thistle. Which one would Thistle be? Well, shoot, now I gotta look up what the, if they're actually called something. They are. In fact, that would be Thistle. Okay, so we have a Thistle and we have an acorn so far. All right. Hey, Mark. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. All right. So, hopefully, nobody at home is cheating with their deck. I assume not. But, so we have a Thistle. An acorn, that would be an oak. We have a rose, uh, bluebells, I believe, and I don't know what the other one is. The other, sage. I feel like sage should be green, but I digress. Uh, all right, so we have two thistles. Okay, so we're going to choose one of those two to be our black uh, dark lady for our game. We do not know which it's going to be, I'm going to shuffle these to where you all can't see. Okay, and there we go. Left or right, that is going to be our dark lady to start. So you all need to choose that now, and then we will finish setting everything else up. And appropriately, Jess got me a London Fog for today, and we also have British Breakfast here Again, Shakespeare, London, right? Kind of makes sense. All right. Oh, that London fog is tasty. Oops. While I'm waiting here. All right. Uh, left was the one that won. All right, so that will be our Dark Lady. Now, this 
The remaining clues are going to get shuffled up. I'm not even going to look at this. This will be done off camera. I'm not looking, looking at y'all. And then the dark lady here, and this is for adjusting difficulty, will be, these are now face up, but we don't get to see them. The dark lady clues, that will work as uh, our, our mask, if you will. Now, one other thing. The game comes with this palm, which is perfectly fine when you're sitting here at the table, but it's a little hard to see, so I went ahead and reached into the vote, and I got a purple disc, and we're going to use the purple disc doesn't come with the game, obviously, uh, in lieu of that. Uh, one other thing, just so I don't forget to mention this, there is uh, the Fair Youth expansion that is available for this game as well, which I obviously have not dug into, but uh, FYI, uh, if you do enjoy this, there is an expansion available. All right, so two last things that need to happen. You are allowed to cut the deck as many times as you want to get started. And the or the, it is super important to keep the order of this deck intact. But, and I actually had to test this because I'm dumb, uh, you can cut this as many times as you want, you just can't shuffle it. So, and all that is going to do is shuffle up the starting location and we'll go one more there. Okay, and then this will go to the bottom of the stealth deck. The stealth deck is now done. The dark lady is set up. Remember, those were alphabetical, A to Z, in the top left corner uh, sequence. They're still A to Z, but they start somewhere. We don't know what letter it's going to start. So it could start on Q, and then it goes sequentially from there, and then once we hit Z, it would go back to A. But I don't have these memorized, and that kind of ruins the game if you do that. So I have intentionally not done that. Now, the, uh, now that the stealth deck is prepared, now we have to choose which location we wish to start from. Once that happens, then I will go ahead and talk about how it is we're going to play the game. And mechanically, it's actually really simple, but the deduction is where y'all definitely are going to come into play. So that said, choose a location. It could be Clerkenwell, it could be Bishopsgate, it could be East Cheap, whatever. And then we will get started. I mean, I suppose I could make the command decision. And technically, are you supposed to choose that before? Let me look. Want to make sure. Because if so, then I will intentionally go somewhere. I started in St. Paul's in my last game. Um, I like where I like where Shrey's head's at. East cheap. Uh, start with a drink before heading out. I like that. Let's do it. Okay. And apparently Timon uh, also agreed with that as well. All right. So we are going to start in East cheap again. Um, for those joining late, I don't know what the hell I did with it. There it is. The pawn that comes with the game just too hard to see. So subbed it out for that. All right. So the game is now set up. All right. So what's going to happen is we are going to alternate turns. The dark lady will go first, and then we will go, all right? For the dark lady, we will uh, advance her spot one movement. So what we know is right now, she is starting the game in one of four locations. We know those locations because this is the current location of her. So we know that she's either in Clerkenwell, in St. Paul's, in Southwark, or in Bishopsgate, okay? She is going to move. 
And in fact, let's go ahead and get her started to begin with. So what's going to happen, and I'm going to have to manipulate this a little bit to make sure that uh, we cannot see anything past the very top card. So that will go there, that will go to the bottom of the deck. And again, this here um, is going to be the t one of the timers for the, or the timer for the game. So then moved from whatever the, uh, the church symbol, or the, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the church symbol to the commercial area. So the dark lady will always move to an adjacent location following a path on the map. Okay. So from here, she can either move from Clerkenwell to Cripplegate, or she can move down to Blackfriars. Well, we look at this, we know she was at a church, and she must always move to an adjacent location, because if we'd played with the bottom uh, sequence, she could have remained in the same location, but uh, alas, not in our game. So she is going to move to an adjacent location. So if we take a look from a church, there is no commercial area, so you know what, we can deduce that she wasn't there, we can remove that one. From St. Paul's, she could go to Cripplegate, or she could have gone to Cl Cornhill. So it's entirely possible that she's in Cornhill. And from Bishopsgate, she could go from Bishopsgate to uh, Shoreditch, to East Cheap, or to Cornhill. Well, no commercial area, no commercial area, so we know she wasn't in Bishopsgate. And finally, from uh, Southwark, she could theoretically go to Liberty of the Clink, but again, no commerce area, commercial area, but she could be at London Bridge. So now we know, okay, that she is in one of those two locations. We do not know which. So her turn is complete. Now, we do not have to use these markers, but I mean, they're there. Why wouldn't we, right? All right. So. What is the goal of the game? Well, before I talk about that, let me talk about what I can do on my turn, and that will kind of inform what the goal of the game is, okay? On our turn, we can do one of four things. We could either move our pawn to an adjacent location, just like what the Dark Lady does. So from East Cheap, now that we have enjoyed our uh, adult beverage, we may move either to the London Bridge, we may move to Cornhill, or we may move to Bishopgate, okay? When we move to those locations, we then take the, let me get the terminology correct, we move to a location and we take the location key and we add it to our tableau. Pretty simple on that, okay? Or if we are somewhere where the dark lady is at our current location. So let's say for argument's sake, we had started here in Cornhill and that is possibly one of the locations that we have deduced that she may be. We may choose to try and search for her there. If so, we're going to use the location cards that we have of the location of where we are to begin, or uh, that we have here. So we would obviously already have to have the Cornhill card because we will have, have to have moved there. Then we will grab the, uh, we will put it underneath and based on where the little hole is on there, we will flip it over and see, is that where she is? If so, we are then going to be able to take a clue card and add it to our tableau to give us a clue of who the dark lady is. And then, <clears throat> that's searching. The third option is to pass, do nothing. Okay. The fourth option is to use the fog, uh, a fog card action. These are fog cards. Anytime we, how do I explain this? What's the best way to do this? Whenever we search for the dark lady, we're going to replace that card with a fog card. All right, and as long as there are fog cards here, we may take this action. So. Uh, to use a fog card action, there must already be one here in the deck. We're going to take another one, put it underneath it, and then reveal it. And it's going to let us do something cool. Okay. So that said, those are our available actions. Now, as we get more of these clues, we're going to be able to use deductive reasoning to figure out the three characteristics of the Dark Lady. All right. If 
we get to a point to where we want to confront the Dark Lady because we think we have matched up the characteristics that she has. Uh, we have to have identified all three of her characteristics. That's what these little markers, having them here. Uh, and then when we have safely eliminated it, we can flip it to the other side there, like so. All right. Uh, you have to successfully search for her in your current location. Um, and if you do, then if you were successful and you success, we successfully uh, match up all three of the uh, characteristics, we win. And then there's scoring involved there. For this game, for the first playthrough of it, our goal is just to successfully do it before we lose the game. How do you lose the game? If you want to uh, confront the Dark Lady, that requires a fog card. If there are no fog cards left, you lose the game. So that would be how we lose. Or the timer. We, if we go through the deck, uh, a total of two, one, so one, two. We go through it three times successfully. And then if we reach where it says zero, the game ends. All right? Okay. All right. So that said, we are here. It is cheap. So the thing that makes the most sense to be able to begin the game for us, for our first one. Doesn't make sense to search for her because we know she's not an East Cheap given the information that we've already gone. So my question for the peanut gallery now is, do we move to Cornhill or do we move to London Bridge? We're not gonna be able to search for her, but we will move there and it may, uh, or we could stay where we are. Hmm. No, it doesn't make sense to stay where we are. So I would say we either move to Cornhill or London Bridge. So help me choose. Which do you want? What's up, Greg? I have yet to uh, do anything with my phone number. I got a new phone. So I will, I will be doing that this week. So waiting on y'all for that. Choose Cornhill or London Bridge. I am doing well, thanks. Or we could pass, but... Now, theoretically... Um, and here's something I'm not sure. So, Shrey, I know you're listening to this, and for all of y'all that have played this, when you start the game, you don't start with that location card in front of you. So, uh, East Cheap, we don't start with. I like the idea of going to Cornhill as well, but... Alright, Cornhill it is. We got two on two on Cornhill first, so we will go ahead and grab the location. I just went ahead and put these in alphabetical order. So we now have the Cornhill card, or uh, key, done. Okay, so now that's our turn. She moves. And now, she has gone to the pub. Now, from here, we know those are the two possible locations. So realistically, looking at this, no, no, and no. So possibly there or possibly there. Okay? I think the thing that makes the most sense is to go to East Cheap, to where we go ahead and get uh, the East Cheap uh, location? I think so. But I will leave this up to you all for now. Now, one thing that I haven't explained yet, and it doesn't make sense to explain it yet, is when we also, when we search for the Dark Lady, she's going to flee. And basically she gets bonus movement. And so it's going to make it a little bit harder to deduce where she is moving to. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to go to East Cheap now. Done. Okay. It is now her turn to move. And she has gone to Shakespeare's residence. So from here, no. So that is possible. And no. 
no possible. Okay, so she either went to Liberty of the Clink or to Bishopsgate, okay? Okay, so now, now we do not have to go where she is because remember, she is going to continually keep moving. She will move every turn. So we could head down to London Bridge here, uh, or we could, we, we already have the Cornhill card, we already have East Cheap. It kind of makes sense to keep exploring new or uh, traveling to new locations. That way when we do end up in the same spot or possible same spot, we can then search for her, okay? So realistically, going to Cornhill doesn't make sense. So it's really, it's London Bridge or Bishopsgate. So I'll let y'all choose on those, okay? <clears throat> How's the weather where y'all are? The only reason I ask is we have had some pretty hellacious heat. Much of the U.S. has experienced some of that. But we've also had a tight... It's like we moved to Florida. It's every day we have afternoon thunderstorms. And there for about three days, we had constant rain. For We needed it, so that was good. But it's, uh, it is oppressively hot outside. Ask Lincoln. We go out for a walk or go to the dog park, and he is, he's like, five minutes. I'm all set. Let's go back into the AC. So that makes sense. Um, hmm. All right. I guess we will, I will make the choice. We will go to London Bridge. Will we? All right, we'll go to London Bridge or London Bridge. All right, we're done. All right, then from those locations, going to a commercial area. So from Liberty of the Clink to there, there's no commercial. Here, there's no commercial. So we know that that was a red herring. So from here, we know for a fact now, I feel pretty confident, that she's in Cornhill. Okay? All right. So this is helpful. Now, theoretically, she could be there, there. Yeah, she could be in either of those two locations. But I feel pretty good that she's in Cornhill at this point. All right? Uh, so, it's our turn. I feel like we should have gone up to Bishopsgate in hindsight, but I digress. Um, so we know where she is, and getting clues by searching where she is is going to be really, really, uh, really helpful. So I think we just move back to East Cheap now that we have, and we do nothing other than just move because we already have the East Cheap card. She's done. She then moves, and now, remember, she will repeat this movement. So if y'all are good enough to memorize this, I am not, however. Uh, from there, she's either going to go to St. Paul's or to Bishopsgate. I think at this point, we head up to Bishopsgate. We can't search because we moved. And there, she goes either from St. Paul's to Blackfriars. And from here, no, no, no. So there she is. She's now over at Blackfriars. Okay, well, we keep getting cards. Um... I guess we go to shortage. I think so. So we'll head up here. Eh. 
That's fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, all right. So from Black Friars, she is now moving, is that to a rural area? And the rural area could not be Liberty of the Clink, can't be St. Paul. She's going up to Clerkenwell. All right. Well, if that's the case, let's head her off over here at Cripplegate. And hopefully she heads over there. All right, her turn. All right, so now she either double back to Blackfriars or she moved to Cripplegate. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a 50-50 shot. I think now would be a good time to search since we're already at Cripplegate. We have the, uh, the, the uh, key card. So, here we go. If we think that the Dark Lady's in the same location, we can search there, okay? So what's going to happen is we're going to, and y'all haven't seen me do this, so we will shuffle up the fog cards, okay? There we go. So we will take the top fog card. We will then put the fog card on underneath this one to re essentially replace this card. So we are going to search in Cripplegate. So we're going to take the top card here and note we can't see what was under that, so that's good. The Cripplegate shows, it matches that symbol. Okay, good. And now we will see where we correct. We were not. We know that because the magnifying glass is empty. It does not have a silhouette of the dark lady. Make by my name thy love and love that's still. And then thou, love, uh, thou lovest me, for my name is Will. All right, so we have failed in our search for the Dark Lady. Okay, so if we were successful, we would have taken the top card from underneath the, the mask here and added it to our tableau. That would have been great, but alas, we have failed, okay? So, what's going to happen is this card is going to get discarded. That is out of the game and we are not allowed to look at that again. Okay? The uh, fog card has now replaced that card that we just had. We get to keep our keyhole and we know she's not there now. So we know she went to Blackfriars instead, okay? Now the Dark Lady is going to flee. And you know what? Uh, let's, we don't, yeah, you know, let's do it this way. I'm just going to try and save us a little bit of room over here. There we go. All right, so she's going to fl flee. How many clue cards, she flees one card per clue card that we have. We have zero clue cards because we failed. So that means she is going to flee zero times. So we're not gonna do anything with that deck. If we had say three clue cards, what we would do is this. We would go one, two, three, and as a block, those three would then go to the bottom of the deck. Again, preserving the order of the deck but she advances a little bit. On top, that is the end of searching for her. Then she gets to take her next turn. So she did not get to flee because she wasn't there. So instead, she's now going to take her normal turn. So the fog card will now go to the bottom and she will go to the next location. The next location is somewhere with a, or from here, not there, not there, so she's going to head down to Liberty of the Clink. Okay, well, okay. So we have all the way down to London Bridge. We've taken all those areas. So we have a choice now. We could go to St. Paul's to try and work back. Maybe she goes back to Blackfriars and to get new locations. Or we could try and head her off coming over this way. Because obviously from here, she only can go to Blackfriars or to Southwark. Okay. So I think South 
or St. Paul's makes the most sense to get another location. I think that's good. Boom, done, done. All right, so she's up. And now she's gone to the pub or to the tavern. Not there, so she went to Southwark. So we could try and follow her, but honestly, let's see. If we move, she moves. We move, she might move. I like that. I like that idea. So I think from here, we're just going to move to Cornhill, and that's that. It's now her turn. And now she either went to Liberty of the Clink or to London, Br London Bridge. I think for us, we'll move to East Cheap. We already have the East Cheap card. Her turn. And now she's gone to the pub. Not there, so she either went there or there. And in East Cheap, let's go ahead and search. So we will grab the, oh, check that. We will grab a, there. Grab the East Cheap card. And, hey, there she is. Yet do not sow, but since I am near slain, Kill me outright with looks and rid my pain. I am not good with Shakespeare. I apologize ahead of time. But she is, in fact, there. We have successfully searched for her. So now, that fog card is going to replace this one. And just, yeah, I'm not going to show it, actually. I don't want to ruin it. So there. So, good. But we get the top one here. Need to, oop, there. So we know that the Dark Lady is not Elizabeth Vernon, okay? However, let's go ahead and bring this around this way so you all can see that a little bit better. Okay, so now we have our first clue. We know that we have chosen, uh, what is the symbol? I forget, Thistle. So we chose Thistle. So Thistle says that we have zero of two of these, meaning, uh, hold on, let me let me get the the deduction correct on this. Um, so, either none of those traits apply, or exactly two of those traits apply. Okay, so we know that either, so that, that, and that, either none of those or exactly two of those are going to be her characteristics. Okay, so we'll just set that aside for now, but we have that information. So these three... Kind of, that is a no pile, and this is a possible pile. So there we go. All right, so we successfully found her. We know she's there. We can remove that one now. But now, how many clue cards do we have? We have one clue card. She flees one spot. So we take the, uh, the fog card that replaced the card uh, where she was, and she now moves. She moves to somewhere with a uh, Shakespeare's residence, which from there will go there. And now it's her turn, okay? She will now go to a commercial area. So obviously that's the only option because there, there aren't commercial areas. We know that. All right, so to answer your question, Joshua, how many times do you need to find her? We haven't find, found her. We just searched for her and we caught a whiff of her. Uh, it's however many we need to be able to deduce what those characteristics are. So I don't know. How good are you at deduction is the question. Uh, that will dictate. Um, I've heard some people as few as two. I've heard as many as six. So I don't know. We'll figure this out. So now we have a choice. We could go where she is, but we know she's going to move. We could pass and stay where she is because maybe she wants another drink. Maybe she's a bit of a lush. I don't know. Uh, she could move from Cornhill to Bishopsgate, 
Cripplegate, St. Paul's, or back to East Cheap. Now, looking at this, um, we have both of those. Obviously, we can only move to one location. So Bishop's Gate or stay where we are are the only two things that really make sense to me. So what do you all want to do? Bishop's Gate or East Cheap? Or can you make a case to go to Cornhill? I don't imagine we're going to want to go to London Bridge. So... Nice, Lars. Good luck to Denmark. Oh, they're playing. Oh, they're playing England, though. I don't know about that. And we are playing a London-esque game, so I don't know about that, Lars. I hope it's a compelling game. I hope it's a good game. How's that? Um, yeah. You know what? I'm good with Bishop's Gate. Let's move there. All right. Boom. Done. She goes. She went to a residence, which residence is going to be either Cripple Gate or Bishop's Gate. I, I say we search since she might be there. So we have the bishop. Uh, check that. Wah, wah, wah. So shall thou feed on death that feeds on men? And death once dead, there's no more dying then. By the way, I've heard recently, and maybe this isn't, that uh, Shakespeare might have been a fraud. Like, this might not have actually been, he might not have actually existed. Anyways, whatever. Um, found that interesting. All right, so uh, we know she's not there, so we know she's there. Okay. Uh, apparently, we are poor at coin flips, Joshua. Okay. Uh, well done, Gator. Uh, the, I hope the team with the red and white flag wins. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we failed, but she does flee because we have a clue. So she will go. She will move to, what is that? That is a rural area, which from there could be from there or there. And then she's going to take her turn. And she will go to residence. So now we have kind of lost sight of her. Because she could go from Clerkenwell down here to Blackfriars. She could go to Cripplegate or from here, obviously Cripplegate, or to Bishopsgate. Well, okay. What do you all want to do? Do you want to search for her? there at Bishop's Gate. I mean, let's face it. I don't think she went there. I just don't think she went there. But I would be willing, uh, if y'all think we should, to search. What do y'all think? Oh, thank you. Joshua says you can take the 33% chance if you're feeling lucky. No, no. This is a team thing. I don't want all the all the blame or all the credit. So no, no. I mean, if we don't, I will say this: that if the next card is a commercial area, it would have to be Cornhill. Now, that's a big if, right? I mean, it's a one in six shot, I believe, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One and seven shot. Um, so if we were to move to Cornhill, we know if it's a commercial that she would, that's where she went. If it were a church... It would be one of those two locations. And even so, moving here helps us limit that, right? If it's a rural, it would either be there or there. I'm just I'm just trying to just trying to, you know, kind of suss this out a little bit. I think I like the idea of moving to Cornhill and then see what she does from there. Alright? Yeah, one space at a time. 
You know what? Maybe I just inferred that. To any adjoining location on the map. Yes, one location. Yeah, I think moving to Cornhill makes sense. So it's now her turn. All right. She went to a church. She can't stay where she is, so not there. This one comes off because we know she wasn't there. So, hey, that worked out. Uh, from either of these locations could go there. Either of those locations could go there. So those are the two places where she is now, possibly. Um... So from there, her options are Cornhill, Cripplegate, or Blackfriar. We have a 33% chance of her coming to where we are. So realistically, we could either move to Cripplegate or we stay in Cornhill. I feel like this is one of those uh, money, uh, money haul things to where you have three options. Only one of which could go there. Two of them could go there. And two of them could go there. So doesn't it make sense to go to Cripplegate? Am I, am I thinking of that? Am I, am I thinking of that right? Because this one can move to there or there. This one can move to there or there. So there's a better chance that she ends up moving to Cripplegate than, there, than it will for her to go to Cornhill. Money Hall, right, yeah. But I'm just, I'm just trying to... Because there are four, four possible options, right? Even though there's three locations, there's four options. Because this, no, there's more than that. There's five options. This one could go one, two. This one could go one, two, three. So there are five options. One of which is Cornhill, two are Cripplegate, and two are Blackfriars. So doesn't it make sense to go to Cripplegate since there's 40% chance of that, or am I just an idiot? And yes, there were two houses in the last few cards. Fair point. Have a good one, Alyssa. Um, if she moves to Cornhill, she has to be there. Yes, because that's the only uh, commercial area. Correct. Um, so she would have to be there, but if she moves to, say, a house, it would be 50%. That's a fair point. All right, the majority say stay. I will relent. We will stay. So we pass. And she moves to the theater. In the theater, no, no, yes. We know she's there. She's in Blackfriars. All right. Either way, it was a cow's opinion. It was so. Okay, so now that she has gone to Blackfriars, uh, do we chase her? I think so. I think we go to St. Paul's and then figure out because if she moves up here or moves down here, we can we can adjust. So I think we move to St. Paul's to head her off. Either way, okay. All right, well, from there, she must move, so can't go there, can't go there, so she obviously went down to Liberty of the Clink. Okay. So again, her options, and it will, it will be a definitive whether it's Southwark or Blackfriars, 
We don't, haven't gone to Blackfriars yet. So we could go ahead and grab the Blackfriars card, the location. I think that would be good. Oh, by the way, I think I, what did I mess up? Um, give me one second. Oh, shoot. I messed something up. The other one. Hold on. Here's what I'm doing. I am going to shuffle these back up, but the, uh, the thistle card should have been removed. That's what I messed up. All right. So now I'm going to shuffle these back up. Yep, my bad. Hold on. Okay. There we go. I thought something seemed off. The, because that is actually a clue for us. The matching suit card actually there. So my bad. Um, okay. So go to Blackfriars. We'll grab the Blackfriars. Okay. All right. She's up. And she went for a drink, apparently, in Southwark, because not there, so she went there. Um, I think we chase behind her at this point, because we haven't been to Liberty uh, of the Clink. Yeah, I think so. I think we chase behind her to go to a new location. And here comes the boat. Oh, no, she went to the theater. Oh, well, hello, young lady. All right, shall we search? I think we do. Liberty of the Clink. Hey, there she is. All right. Uh, only my plague thus far I count my gain. That she that makes me sin awards me pain. Yep, I just, I can't get into Shakespeare. I try, I, nope. Okay, so done. Okay. So we have successfully found her, or cut a whiff of her. We grab the top card. And now, okay, so Thistle, we know that there will be two of these symbols on hers. Okay, and also, we know that this is going to be the two because it can't be zero because there's a heart. So we know for a fact, right, that the heart will be one. Huh, see what I did there? All right. So then what else do we know? We know that it, one of the others will be the crown or the ring. We also know that the other one will be the chain or the music symbol, which I will, I will go ahead and mention what these symbols are. So uh, we'll go top to bottom. Married, has court connections, is armorous, uh, has a documented link to Shakespeare, armorous, uh, and musical. Uh, could be chain in music. Oh, that's a fair point. We do not know for sure that it will be the heart. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. There are seven symbols total. Okay, so this is what we know so far. Okay. And I will keep these on screen now. So these are our known things. 
And again, we're looking at the thistle lines for both of these, okay? Yeah, we do not know, you are correct. All right, so now we have two clues. So we will take two cards and put them to the bottom and we don't get to see there. So those two as a block. So we know she will move two steps. One, two, no, no, two. We know that she had to have gone there because commercial area. So now she takes her turn. And she's either at Southwark or East Cheap because she went to the pub. And now it's our turn. Hmm. I could make a case for staying there. Uh, what do y'all think? It seems y'all want us to stay there. Um, uh, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. All right, okay, we will stay, we will pass. So, Dark Lady's turn. All right, we have gotten to the countdown card. When the countdown card comes to the top of the stealth deck, immediately rotate or flip it to show the next lowest number and place it at the bottom of the deck, revealing a new top card. If you were advancing a certain number of cards, da 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 So from the two, it will become a one. So this says, uh, more perjured eye and to swear against the truth. So we do not want to see that when it's flipped up. So that will go to the bottom. So she then went to the church, to a church. No church, no church, no church, she's there. We know that. Hmm. I think there's a pretty good chance she goes up to Shoreditch. I think we come around this way. I think we go up to Blackfriars. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, we're gonna move up to Blackfriars, done. And she went to a commercial area. No, no, or no, no, yes, so she would have had to have gone there. Uh, St. Paul's, I guess, makes the most sense now. because we got a 50-50 shot if she chooses a church. So she chooses a tavern, it'll be there. A church, it'll be one of those two. And if it's Shakespeare's residence, it'll be one of those two. However, the only two places we have not been yet are Clerkenwell and Southwark. And keep in mind, one thing I haven't mentioned, after we have taken both of those and, and uh, visited both those, we may take that clue at any time, but obviously it advances things quicker because it will give us a third clue, but it gives us a third clue. So that would be the reason that we would go to Clerkenwell. Is, but then again, the problem is it's way over here. So... Oh, that's right. 
so I do not remember where the hell she went from Cornhill. We started here. Yeah, I say we go to St. Paul's. Because remember, the order remains the same. And now, she went to East Cheap. Damn it. So I guess... I think she went back to Cornhill, didn't she? I think we go over to Cornhill from there. Uh, she went to Bishopsgate. Damn it, I cannot remember. Don't back it up. Don't cheat. Don't find that out. Just from there, what do we do? Feel like at some point she went back to East Cheap, or she went back to Cornhill. I think we stay there, but I want this to be a group effort. Hey, Jonathan, welcome. Yeah, I think we stay in Cornhill. I I agree with that. There we go. And she went and said hi. So we will search for her there. Hello, young lass. Him have I lost. Thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet I am not free. Okay. We have received a third clue. Hey, Brianna. Penelope Rich. Okay. That's the new one. These are the two that we had. So we know that two of these must be. Uh, so the symbols, in case you're wondering, and I'm sure you are for the new stuff, are has children married, has court connections. Okay. So wh exactly one of those is correct. Oh, boy. Two of these, of which there is no overlap with that one. Two of these and one of these. So it's between those six, we know for sure. So we know for sure that it's going to be one, right? Because there's no overlap. And there are two of those and one of these. So which one is not shown on that? So let's see. There's, that is a possible, that is a possible, that is a possible. Let's do them in the order there. Then we have that, that, and that. So what we know is uh, the dark lady is not literary or creative. I feel pretty confident, okay, about that. So now let's see. We know it's going to be three of these. How did we prove its heart? Azra uh, fail. And Drew, how do we know that we confirmed it's a heart? Okay, let me try and figure this out. 
So if it were zero of these, it can't be zero of them. It's got to be two of those. Okay. It has to be one of those. And it must be two of these. Oy vey. So we know it has to be two, though, because it can't be, could it be zero? Okay, let's see. That, let's say it weren't, let's say it were zero, right? So all of those are wrong. Then we would know, then it would have to be this. Is that possible? Per this, that's possible. So actually, that's actually possible, right? That is, because that would be two on this card and one on that card. And that also would be true because that would be zeros. So that is, that is a possibility is all I'm saying. Okay? But now that we have figured that out, let's look at it as if two of these were true. So let's just start at the top there and let's say those two were true well that can't be because one of those has to be so we know that it can't be those two could it be that then top and bottom well one of those is true which would be that one so that works out two of these could be that and one of the others being one of those. So that is also a possibility. It could be that. Could it be this and that then? Uh, yep, it could because crown, yeah, so that, no, there's too many, there's too many combinations. We still don't know if that's zero or two. So we have not proven that it's heart. Okay, look at me being useful. What we have proven is we know it's not that. That's it. So that is a done thing. Okay. Well, we're going to need at least one more. I do so love these type games. I really do. This is really clever. This is really clever. I'm enjoying this quite a bit. Y'all ever play those those uh, those books? Um, they're like uh, like they're not all crosswords. They're not all whatevers. But the logic puzzles, right? You have it's basically a grid and Excel sheet on it. Uh, I, that's my favorite type of puzzle. That's kind of what this is, right? Um, okay. So, all right, so now we searched, we got this, we now have three clues. So we're going to, as a block, by the way, I couldn't figure out whether or not this worked and whether or not we need to reverse this. So I actually had to get a, a stack of numbered things and then took it because I was worried that if we took the top three cards in the same order and put them at the bottom, it wouldn't work out. I'm an idiot. So go ahead and laugh at me all you want. That's true. That's one, that's two, and that's three there. So she is going to move three spots and end up there. So let's look. She, oh God, she could theoretically go one, two, three. So she could end up there. She could go one, two, three, no. Could go one, two, no. One, two, three. One, two, three, nope. One, two, three, nope. One, two, three, yep, she could. She could be there. Uh, are those the only rural spots? There's rural there and rural there. Yeah, those are the only two rurals. So that's the end of our turn.
Um, all right, so it's her turn now. Okay, so now we have a fog card for the first time, okay? You saw that every time we search, we had a fog card. But when a fog card comes up, we have an option. Now, there are fog cards, fog cards left. So we are allowed to use that fog card if we want. If we, um, they don't change the lady's movements in any way. So in other words, she moved. She's either there, there, or there. We just don't know where. Because kind of fog of war, think of it that way, okay? Uh, but if we want, we can use this fog card. And what happens is we take a fog card and put it underneath, and then we're going to reveal it and do whatever it is. It's some sort of special rule thing, but it removes a fog card from us. And remember, we have to finish the game having at least one left because we have to then uh, confront her, okay? So, but we could use that, and that's going to give us some benefit. It's going to be helpful in some way, shape, or form. Usually, I think there's something that makes us remove a clue card and you're not allowed to go back and look at it. So, our options now are stay in Cornhill, move to an adjacent location, or use the fog card. So, what do you all think? I mean, I want to know what it is. So, I like the idea of using a fog card. So, here's what's going to happen. This fog card will replace this fog card, like so. Oop, we didn't see that. And then we get to reveal that. And what do we have? We have, like a fiend from heaven to hell is flown away. Discard this card. Well, that was useless. That sucks. Boo! All right. It's her turn. So we know that she's either currently from here, she had to have moved there, she had to have moved there, or down to Bishop's Gate. So we know she's currently in one of those three spots. And she went to somewhere with a boot from there. Uh, so from here, no, 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 whoop. So I guess she's not as clever as she thought she was. Have a good one, Timon. Hopefully uh, you come back to see how it ends. All right, so it's now our turn. I have no clue where the hell she goes from there. I... Yeah, y'all y'all decide where we go. I have no idea. This one's tough. So, we can either, you know, search for her when we end up in the same location, or we get to Southwark and Clerkenwell, and we'll be able to get that clue. Those are our two options. Um, I mean, I can make a case going, we're only two steps away from Clerkenwell, we're three steps away from Southwark because if you look, one, two, three, four, five, six turns, or one, two, three, four, five going that way. Hey, Raider fan. It's one quicker if we were to go up to Cripplegate and then Clerkenwell. I'm just. I like seeing all these new names. Welcome. All right, y'all. Make sure you subscribe. Give it a thumb down below. Support the show. Patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. So, um, Shrey and uh, Plicey say go to East Cheap. All right. I'm not 100% on board, but it's a team game, so I'm okay with that. All right. 
she moves. And uh, apparently y'all have chosen well because she went over to Southwark from there. Uh, I mean, the obvious then is London Bridge, right? And if she goes through a commerce, we know she went there. She, we do not know. So she either went back to Liberty of the Clink or she went to London Bridge. Now we have a choice. Ah, too late, Shrey. Now we have a choice. Do we search and it fast, if we're, either way, it's going to advance three, three. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. I like it. Uh, now, we don't have to. We could go to Southwark to get the Southwark card. You got to ask yourself, do you feel lucky? Joshua says, I think she went to Liberty. Okay. We really are collectively terrible at coin flips. We are. Ah, damn it. I mean, one, two, three, four, regardless of anything. And here's the thing. If we go to Southwark and she goes to a church, she went here. Because... No and no. If she went on a boat, she went, uh, no, if she went to a pub, it would be to either of those. Yeah, I don't know. Y'all, y'all decide. Do we roll the dice, the proverbial, or flip the coin and search for her? Or do we just go to Southwark, which is a guaranteed helpful, and she might move to where we are. I don't think she went there via a, a church. She might have gone there via a pub, though. I can't remember. I think Southwark's the safer choice. Okay. And another fog. So she moved. So she's in one of three places now. She's either there, she's either there, or she's at Southwark. So our options are we could search, we could move towards Clerkenwell, or we could do the fog card. The good news is it's going to be something different. There are no re repeats on the cards. I didn't even know the whole you could discard like I didn't know that exists. And for those scoring at home, we have four of these left. So we need one for a clue. We need one for uh, to confront her. So we have two more to do. Hmm. Surely the fog card is useful. Uh, don't call me Shirley. All right, y'all want to do the fog card? I'm, all right, all right, let's do fog card. All right, so we have one here. I just do that to make sure that I have it straight. So we have that, okay. Make sure that none of us can see it. Here we go. All right, be wise as though art cruel. Discard a clue of your choice, then draw another from the clue deck. All right, so when we do this, no, I, I guess you can use pen and paper, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So, let's grab our clues. Well, all right, let's, before we do this, and we're going to draw another. Oh, by the way, this uh, give me a second. Hold on one second. I'm gonna make sure I do this right. Uh, then place this card at the bottom of the fog deck. OK? 
Okay, so this will go to the bottom of the deck. I want to make sure that I don't screw up the timing of everything. There we go. All right. So we know that it's of these. It must be two of those. So chain, heart, and music. We know that it must be two of those. So we can discard Ann uh, Watley. So we will discard Ann, never to see her again. We will then Oh, then place the card at the bottom of the fog deck. Oh, thank you. Reading. That will go to the bottom of the fog deck. Well, that actually works out really well. Okay. Oh, well, that makes it a whole lot easier. All right. So then we are looking at Thistle. It must be one of those. Well, we know that it can't be this. We've already eliminated that one per the others. So it can only be one of heart, and it must be two of these. But it, according to Marie Mountjoy, it can only be one of these. So that means music must be the case per the card we discarded. So music must happen because it can only be one of those two. Okay. Then... So we know music is a must. Okay, so we will, we will take that and put that there. We know for a fact that's the case. Okay. Okay, good, excellent. So now it's only one of these, but it must be one of these. It can only be one of these. Wait a minute. Yeah, so it's got to be one from column A, one from column B. And because this says zero or two, and obviously all three of them are in there. No, I guess theoretically it still could be that and that. We still don't know. Son of a... So it's still an option of one of those or one of those. Well, I mean, it, Chris, to answer your question, he says, is the clue that got discarded still helpful? I'm not sure how the game does that. No, you're just not allowed to go back and look at that card. And we just use these as kind of helpers. So, yeah, seriously, glory to Rome. I agree. That sucks. So... There we go. All right, well, so let's do it this way. We know that there is going to be one in column A, and it's going to be one in column B, and we know it's the note. Okay, so hold on. Can't be chain. Why can't it be the chain? Yeah, the solution didn't change, just the info we have to work with in front of it. Correct, Chris. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I don't know that we can definitively say that it's not chain yet. Because remember, it was exactly two of these, including the note. We already got the note. We know that it has to be the note. But it still could be the chain because the chain still works for this. Yeah, I disagree unless Joshua can prove otherwise. So here are, um, the good news is we discarded it. So we do not have, when, uh, uh, how did we do that? That was a fog card. So she does not flee. It has to be two of heart, crown, ring. It does not have to be two of those. It could be zero of those, which means it could be the rattle. If it can be the rattle, then it can be the chain. Uh-uh. I'm sorry. Okay, Shrey, same way. All right, I, I, I. Okay, the card we here. Let me work through this. The card we threw away said it had to be two of these. Then, with that said, this one says it must be one of these. We know that it can't be that one. Because we had to already eliminate, we had eliminated that from a previous one. Which means it then must be one of those. And if it must be one of these, it can't be both of those. If it can't be both of those, then it has to be the note. So we know it's the note. So now... It has to be one of these, and it would have to be one of those, then, by default. So then, let's take a look at this. It must be one of these per this card right here. This one, it still could be zero of these, because it could not be that, it could not be that, and it could not be that, which means it would be those two and that. That would satisfy that card. And exactly one of these, would that would satisfy that card. Also, those two would satisfy the card that we dis discarded. And then this one, it must be exactly one of those, which means it could be this and not that. So no, chain is not out. It's either those two, we know notes for sure. So we know it's either those or, let's work it a different way. It cannot be that in either of those. If it's heart, then it can't be that, obviously, because one from column A, one from column B. And it's exactly one of these, so it still could be any of those. This one says... If it's the heart, then it must be one of those two. And this one, it would have to be that then. So it's still, it's either this and this, or it's this and that. Those are our two combinations left. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. All right, so we chose the fog action. So now it's her turn. She then moves to Shakespeare's house, which from here, no, no, there. From here, there, no. And from there, there. So she's in one of those two spots. Correct, Joshua. Yep. <coughs> so that, or that, that, or that, that. One more clue, and we got this. We can go through the deck twice. 
but I think we work up to Clerkenwall or Clerkenwell. So instead of guessing on where she is, because that is church and pub. If she grabs pub, it could be there or there. If it's church, it's there only. I don't like our chances, so I think we continue moving over to Liberty of the Clink. She goes. She goes to a commercial area. Commercial from here? No, no, no. So she's there. We've established where she is. We go ahead, head up to Blackfriars. Her turn. It's another fog card. So right now, we know that she went from there to either there, 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 or there. We don't know which one she moved to. I'm of the mind, I just say, screw it, we pull that. All right, so we have all of the clues. Now, once we have done that, let me be clear on this. Um, once all locations have been visited, then the exposed clue card may be revealed at any time of your choice and added to your collection of clues. We moved. I'm not going to grab it quite yet because I want to see what she does. So it's her turn. She goes to a rural area. There are only two rural areas on the board which that means she either comes here to Clerkenwell or there. At any time. So as a not as our action, now I think we grab it and then we can maybe confront her. All right. This will be a big reveal. So actually, we've established this already with all this. So you know what? We'll just do it right here. All right, <clears throat> it is exactly one of this, this, or that. Okay, well, we now know that it is not either of those because it can't be both of them per that. So what we still don't know is which one of those it is. Son of a, glory to Rome. Damn it. Well, we know it's heart. We don't know what the third one is. Damn it. So we'll move the fog cards up here now. Anne Hathaway, not as helpful as she could have been. You don't know that it's heart and crown. Okay, prove to me, Ayana, how it's heart and crown. Okay, let's try and eliminate the ring. This has already given us the information that it can. So on this one, so let's look. It is exactly two of these. Oh, actually, you know what? No. Yeah, it still could be either one of those, because heart, so we know it's a two now. But we don't know if it's either of those. This one, it's exactly one. One of the, I don't see. Yeah, we get to take our action now. We could search for her, but that's going to power through four cards. I think we should. Hey, Bernardo. I mean, you might know, but can you prove it, Ayana, is the question. It could be either, still. Because I don't think there's a way we can prove it one way or the other. Are you all in agreement? So I'm okay with searching on it. So we grab a fog card.
there. And this is Clerkenwell. All right, so let's see. Wah, wah, wah. There will I swear beauty, herself is black. And all they found out, thy complexion lack. Well, that sucked. All right, well, she flees four, because four. So, one, I'm gonna do this off camera and not look. One, two, three, four to the bottom of the deck there. Oh, I need to make sure I didn't, yeah, we did not get the, uh, the timer card. So from where she is, I mean, one, two, three, four, like she could be there. From there, one, two, three, four, she could be there. Can we figure one, two, three, four, she could be there. And is there a way from here, one, two, three, she could be there. So she's one of those four places. Damn it. Okay. I have no idea what we should do. So peanut gallery, y'all tell me. Where do you want to go? Or do we, I don't think we stay in Clerkenwell. She can be in any of those four locations. God, this is brutal. Oh no, it's okay if the timer comes up again because it will come. Oh no, we can't. <sighs> That's a good point. Getting another clue is unlikely. Before the timer comes up, we can confront knowing we have a 50-50 correct guess. Uh, yeah, all right. So let's go through the uh, confronting her. Um, to confront the dark lady, you must have identified all three of her characteristics and indicated these by putting them in those... Uh, spots, then you must successfully search for her in your current location. You cannot search to gain a clue and then confront the lady in the same turn. Uh, if you successfully find her in your current location, then confront her by revealing the dark lady and comparing the icons. If you correctly identified, you win. If you do not, you lose. So, yeah. Um, I have no idea what to do. Correct, Joshua. If we want another clue, we're going to have to find her twice before the end of the game. The lady flees. Uh, yeah, regardless. When you search, she flees. So we need... I think we need to move? I think? But where do we move? I don't know. Do we, do we move to Cripplegate? which then gives us options from there. The problem is we know she's not going to move to Cripplegate because it's too far away from any location. If we move to Blackfriars, at least it's possible she moves there. But I feel like that is, it's a slow way to get back over here. Ah, oh, this is brutal.
No, I failed to pay attention to the pattern of her movement. <laughs> so, Cripple Gate or Blackfriars, y'all? Choose. All right, there's two of y'all for Blackfriars. We're going to Blackfriars. All right, done. All right, she moves. She's going to a pub. So, from here, no, 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 no. So, she wasn't there. From here, no, 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 she wasn't there. And so, there or there. And we're at Blackfriars. So we know she's in one of those two locations. Now what? If she goes to the theater, she has to go to Liberty of the Clink. Commerce, the commercial area would be one of those two. A church would be Bishop's Gate. Shakespeare's house is those two. And to a harbor, is it Riverside, is those two. At least that's the only theater. Yeah, I think we do. I think we go there. Hope she uh, comes and hangs out at the theater. So, she has moved either there from here to there, there to there, there to there, or there to there. I feel like she did when we put that there. Oh my God. We can't search for her, unfortunately. When there's a fog card, you're not allowed to search. So we could take the fog card, we could move, We could pass, and that's it. I mean, I guess we take the fog card, right? I mean, I think we have to at this point. All right, so what do we got? Move your pawn to a neighboring location. Wah, wah, wah. Thy soul check thee that I come so near. All right. So this will go to the bottom of the fog deck. Three cards left. We know what the bottom two are. Where do we want to move? The good news is we get another movement out of it, but I have no idea. If she moves to a church, it would be either Southwark or St. Paul's. If she moves to a theater, it would be Shoreditch or Blackfriars. If she moves to a harbor, it would have to be Blackfriars. And if it's Shakespeare's house, it would be either Bishop's Gate or Blackfriars. We have to move, so it's either Southwark or Blackfriars. Choose, y'all. Joshua says Southwark. Oh, this is tense. I think we get to actually go another time through the deck. Because the rules say if at any time the countdown card is revealed on zero, 
because you rotate it to show the next lowest number and place it at the bottom of the deck. So I think we actually get another time through the deck. Uh, I think it's available now, Drew. I think. Um, it does not have a certain church here, Shrey, because there's one at Bishopsgate. She could be at Cornhill, which means she can move to Bishopsgate. So, no. We've only gone through it one more. So we're okay. I, I'm not as panicked as I thought I was. And also, a church actually could be Southwark, Bishopsgate, or St. Paul's, actually. So, no. The harbor has a guarantee that if it's a harbor, she moves to Blackfriars. I think we go Blackfriars. That makes the most sense to me. And went to a church. So, there, there, from there, or there, and can't be that. So, one of those three locations. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Do we stay there? So let's see. Theater not guaranteed because could go to shortage. Same with Liberty of the Clink. That's not good. Shakespeare's house, not good because could be there, there, or there. Uh, Harbor could be there, there, or there. So staying here sucks. So we're not going to stay here. If we go to Liberty of the Clink, it's the exact same three options. So those are, oh, that sucks. So we're not doing anything for this turn. It's for the next turn. I have no idea. I have no idea where to go. St. Paul's or Liberty of the Clink. We're not going to stay in Blackfriars. Honestly, I think we go St. Paul's. That feels like the right thing. She moves. She goes to a commercial area. So from here, no, no, possible. So there or there. She's in one of those two locations. Okay. Same, Bernardo. Um... Okay, so let's see. She moves to a pub, it would be one of those two. If she moves to a church, it would be there, there, or there. If she moves to Shakespeare's house, it would be there or there. That's it. Those are the options. Cornhill or stay? I think we, if we go to Cornhill, we're punting on next turn. Probably. Yeah, we are, because she's not going to be at Cornhill next turn. If we stay in St. Paul, we have a one and three shot, which is terrible. If we move to Cripplegate, it's a one and two shot, 50% shot.
I think we go Cripplegate. All right, she went to the pub. So she's either there or there. I think at this point we have to go to Cornhill, right? To head her off that way? Yeah, we go to Cornhill next. And there. So it says, when the countdown card comes, rotate or flip it to show the next lowest number and place it at the bottom of the deck, revealing a new top card. Um, if at any time this is revealed on zero, which it's not yet, so it goes to the bottom. So, okay. So we moved, and now she went to the church, which the church means she's there. All right. Yeah, if we see that card again, we lose. I think we stay where we're at. Right? Because no matter which symbol she reveals, we know where she goes. And there's as good a chance to go there as it is to East Cheap, so I think we stay where we are. There we go. So we need to find, okay, so we're going to search, we know this. There are three cards there, because she is where we are. And this is Cornhill. Okay, so we could search to get a clue. Or we could search and take a 50-50 shot. There she is. All right. Him hath I lost, thou hast both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet I am not free. So that goes away. I think we have to get a clue. We have four but we've had a fifth, but we had to discard it. And we know it's one of these two. So, Peanut Gallery, what do you say? Do we guess 50-50 on that, or do we search? If we search, right, or if we reveal the clue, that's gonna advance, she's gonna flee five. Which makes it really hard to find out where the hell she went. And we'll have to do it again, we gotta find her assuming that the clue that we get narrows that down. Plyce says a clue. You are correct. If you get a clue, she could be anywhere. Fitty fitty. If we guess. That's a non, that's non-committal, Jonathan. I do not accept that answer. So Plyce says scrap it, coin toss. Bernardo says clue. Come on, there's a bunch of y'all out there. Let's go, make a decision. Because we win as a team or we lose as a team. I mean, so just to be clear... That's how many cards are in the deck, right? There's 26 cards, right? Well, 27, I guess, technically. It took like five to found her, find her, five or six at least, right? And then we're going to go through another five. I think we can do it. What's up, Christos? I, we're going to take a clue. And y'all can lament. 
I think so. I think we go with a clue. We have Lucy Morgan. Okay. It can only be one of these. Well, we know what it is now. It's got to be the ring. Because we know it has to be one of those, and we've proven it's one of those, or it's both of those. So if we know it's that, it can't be the crown, so it's got to be the ring. There we go. So we know what her characteristics are. Thank you, Lucy, for giving us the final link. But now she moves five. I'm doing this off camera and not looking, and I know it's not going to be the card. So one, two, three, four, five goes to the bottom. She flees five to a harbor. So there, and literally she could be at any of the harbors. So she's at any of those three. We know that. Okay. It is now her turn. She goes to a rural area. Good news. We know exactly where she is. It's got to be there because that's the only other rural area. Oh! Hot damn. Well, we're moving to Cripplegate. Her turn. Shakespeare's house, we got a 50-50 shot. And, of course, it's a fog card. <laughs> so, that means she is either there or there. We don't know which. And we cannot search. We can take the fog card because we will have one more to uh, confront her. But... Yeah. So what do we do? We could skip it. We could move to Cornhill. We could move to St. Paul's. We could move to Clerkenwell. We could move to Shoreditch. I like moving... See, church could be either of those. Commercial area would be Cornhill only. Rural is those. Theater is there or there. Remember, this is the beginning of the deck, right? And I feel like she hung out over here early on. Oh, this is hella clever. Oh, I am I am in awe of this game. This is amazing. Um, I know she hung out at the beginning down over in this area. So I think, damn it, I can make a case for the fog or I can make a case for Cornhill. That's good logic, Shrey. Good logic. I appreciate that. Um, so fog or Cornhill, make your decision, peanut gallery. We did put five cards to the bottom. That's a fair point, Lawrence. All right. The majority say Cornhill. I would have gone fog. I'm just saying. All right. She moves. She goes to a harbor. So from here, no, 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 no. So she wasn't there. Harbor means she had to go to Liberty Clink. Now what? Five cards, so is she coming back around this way? Do we go to St. Paul's? Oh. So, East Cheap or St. Paul's? Those are our only two options, y'all. This is getting tense. Who said this was going to be too easy if you have to uh, go through it a third time? 
five times every time we do that, right? And no, nah, I don't know. I think this is the right. So we have go for the beer. Beer's always good. So that's two. There's three. For each cheap, there's one to stay. Sure, we know what this fog card is, but we didn't know what that one was. Looks like each cheap has one out. To be clear, I thought St. Paul's, but I digress. We win as a team, we lose as a team. Going to the pub. So she's coming over to Southwark. It's the only other option. Well, I guess we have to go to London Bridge. Her turn. All right. Oh, do we have a decision to make now? If we search and we're right, we win. We search in wrong, she's going to power through five cards and we probably lose. Up to y'all. Search. Hell, even if we move, that she could be there, there, or there. Theater would be, let's, so let's see. Theater is there. His house is there. Harbor is there. So that's three that must be there. Church is there. Pub is either one of those. Oh boy. All right, we're going to search. London Bridge. Clandestine. Clandest, clandestine? Clandestine. There we go. All right. She's there. Therefore, I lie with her and she with me. And in our faults, by lies, we flattered be. So we have discovered her, so we're, we are going to confront her. So, to work through this now. To confront, you must have identified all three of her characteristics. Then you successfully search. If you find her, then confront her. Here we go. Ring. Good. Heart. Good. Woo! The dark lady was Jane Devenance. Congratulations, us. Plicey, yeah, buying the hell out of this. Right? Seriously, how amazing was this? So a couple of things before we, uh, before we get into a round table. Let's go back. That fog card, I'll go in, because we won, if we had lost, I was not going to reveal this, but because we won, that fog card was discard the top card from the fog deck. Whoo. Oh yeah, let's figure out what our score is. Count the number of cards on top of the stealth deck up to, but not including, the countdown card. Multiply the number shown on the countdown card by the number of stealth cards in a sequence. Normally 26, but see, right, yeah, okay. And add this to your count. So, count the number of cards. So the countdown card is right there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... 15. Then, 
Multiply the number shown on the countdown card, zero, by the number of stealth cards in the sequence and add that to your count. We're still at 15. Then add two points for each card left in the fog deck and apply any adjustments on the... Uh, uh, so, 15 plus 2 is 17. And to be clear, uh, there we go. Um, we're a chimney sweeper. I don't care. We won. Number two on the countdown card. Like, really? Like, seriously? Good luck with that. So. All right. Uh, a couple of things. So, let, and one, actually, one other thing. Let me show an example of these cards. So, you see on these. So, we played the top left one, but there are seven other sequences, you're never going to memorize this. You're never going to. And if you do, God bless you. But yeah. Um, so there are seven different sequences that that could be. Um, and you can reverse them. You could do A to Z or Z to A, right? So again, so if you look at this, like you see that, you know, they're all in order. So the, the fog cards replace letters. So a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, etc., etc. So the replayability, awfully damn high in this. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and and there are other that aren't alphabetical. The whole nine yards. Uh, with that, you can adjust the difficulty in this. Um, the easy sequence has 28 cards. We played the moderate difficulty, which is 26. Hard has 24. And then you can make it expert, uh, plus discard one or more fog cards it's set up, adding five points to your final score for every card that you discard um, if you're really sick. There's a historical and, and the sources that they used for the uh, little historical book. There is the expansion, which is the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the Fair Youth expansion, which haven't touched. That was fantastic. That was legitimately a phenomenal de deduction game. And yes, phenomenal. Um, yeah. Oh, that was, that was fantastic. That was way better than I expected it to be. Shrey undersold it to me, in my opinion, uh, which is a good thing. And really, really enjoyed that game. I thought that was just really clever and well implemented. Now, obviously, uh, the order of uh, the the clue cards that come out, plus, you know, you're going to randomly have a different one. There are, uh, what, six different suits? So there could be 12 different. Yeah, that's just the replayability. This is, is awesome. Yes, phenomenal. Thank you, Jess. Uh, yeah. Um, check it out. I, I guess there is a print and play available, but I'll say this, um, support a publisher. I mean, this was originally a print and play and they published it and the production quality on this. I mean, it's simple, right? But I mean, you have the wood, wooden bits, you have nice cards. Uh, they're not linen fit. Yeah, they are linen finish even. Um, yeah, just support the publisher if you can. I think it's worth it. I think it's, it's, it's worth spending the money, I would say. I mean, obviously, if it's out of print, I don't know. Um, then that might be something else. But, uh, yeah, fantastic game. Legitimately fantastic solo game. Thoroughly enjoyed that. All right? Um, yeah, so check it out. That was uh, Black Sonata. So a big thanks again to Shrey turning me on to this one. This is, if you dig deduction, you dig solo, or either of those two things, I think you're really going to enjoy this, as you just saw. All right. Um, and if you do uh, uh, get it, uh, make sure maybe touch base with the publisher. Let her know you. Let them know you saw it uh, here on Heavy Cardboard. Certainly would appreciate it. Give a thumb, a like, subscribe. I guess thumb and a like is the same thing. You get the idea. Consider supporting the show over on Patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Certainly, certainly. Would appreciate that, y'all. If you think the uh, the show gives you either entertainment or helps turn you on to games or turn you off 
from games and help save you money in that regard, certainly would appreciate a little bit of support over on Patreon. That's, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm going to be getting a copy. This was, this was great. This was really, really clever. Uh, the theme, somewhat pasted on, sure, but not everything can be obsession. Right? Fair? But the, the mechanics of this game are just spot on. Just really well done. Really well done. All right, so that's it. Uh, join me Sunday along with Alyssa, Ken, and Shrey when we're going to play the first uh, playthrough of Oath on camera. We will have played it a few times beforehand, and it's going to be up to y'all whether or not you want it to be a one-off or if you want us to do a campaign and see how the story evolves. Everybody is on board with either one of those, so it's going to be up to y'all. So definitely join us Sunday at noon Eastern early in the day uh, for this one, and yeah, it definitely feels like a Cole Whirly game. So, Pax Pamir, John Company, but whimsical theme, Kyle Farron art, the whole nine yards, so there you go. All right, I will see you all on Sunday. Uh, until then, be kind to one another. Vaccinations, masks, whatever applies, just in the end, be respectful of one another, be kind to one another. And I will see you all on Sunday. Take care, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. That was a lot of fun today. All right. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. Woohoo! The Dark Lady has been revealed.